Hello everyone, Pally Tom here, and welcome back to Remnant 2. We are still in the shadow of the clock tower as we begin our adventure today. I did find out something about my medic handler combo that I just wanted to make you guys aware of. Thank you for making me aware of it. I also found out in between episodes and I was very confused. So if I die, I was making some claims that our good friend here would res us. Unfortunately, that is only possible if I make handler my main class instead of my secondary class. It's prime perk here in the middle. When the handler is down, the companion will attempt to revive. So that means if we want to have that set up, we would then be missing out on the generation of our additional dragon hearts. And let me tell you, I'm so broke because I'm crafting every weapon to show you guys what they do, that I don't have additional dragon hearts like you might in your game right now. So I kind of need to hang on to that for the time being. So the dog is not rezzing us. That was fake news. But thank you for informing me and making us all better at the video game. As always, if you guys are enjoying the Remnant 2 content, please be sure to hit that thumbs up button. It helps us out a ton, especially this late in our playthrough. I have two trait points to spend, and I didn't spend them on purpose this time because I wanted you guys to see us maxing out our expertise and getting 20% skill cooldown reduction on both of of our main abilities. Oh, glad I noticed this. When I was swapping stuff around, it removed my shield. We definitely need, need to hang on to that. So we are in Lamarck District. Yeah. Looks like we have more of the fire boys up ahead. Do I have any mods to send their way? I sure do. If we use our mod for this, for whatever reason, they do not ignite themselves ablaze. So that's probably better for me if we can manage it. This guy is on fire though and making his way down towards us. I rubbed against him a little too much, but a quick roll will take care of that damage. Now, I believe this is one of the places that I saw when I was playing with Tim. So you guys may recognize this if you're an avid stream viewer as well. So as we make our way down to the charred remains of this building, there is a basement that is still pretty pristine. It's been protected by stone, not all that flimsy That's wood up there. Clocks. But in this room, why are there so many clocks? What do you think this is about? Clocks everywhere. Well, another trade point at the top of the stairs. Now I have another decision to make. What are we gonna start to put points into next? I'm gonna start to build into bark skin and start getting my damage reduction scaling. That'll just make the health that I've already invested into even more valuable. Basically like armor protecting it if you want to think about it that way. Commit changes, we'll probably keep those even. Like I'll, I'll catch bark skin up to my health one and then level them up evenly as we go. Well, there is a few notes strewn about, or at least one actually in here, and a clock over here. We can move the, the minute and the hour hands on. Curious, curious. The note says, tell you what, Hugh, time it done stop. Like the sky just halted forever. It's working, the village clock that is, just like in the stories. Now that I see it myself, I can't keep this flywheel with me. I barely made it home as it is. If they catch me, they might take it and start the clock again and doom us all. I'll tell you where it is though. I doubt them bleeders can read, and you should know too, in case you make it through this while I... Check the house clock. But no, that old bird won't just open for anyone. Look to the tower, girl! You'll know what to do. I'm off to find you now. Here's hoping these letters have just been a waste of time. Look to the tower! Hmm... Pause the video right now. Leave a comment down below. Do you know what time it is on the tower? I gave you all the clues you need for this puzzle. 
<laughs> now let's see if I remember. <laughs> I think this is it. Now, keep in mind, this isn't a regular clock. So, uh, hey, that was it. That was, I was one minute off. Okay, one minute off. That's not too bad. And look what dropped out of there. It's a cogwheel. Very cool. Now, this next part we did not do on stream. This is going to be new to you guys. Now, back to the clock tower. You see that item right there? We're going to try to get it. I wonder if these are gargoyles that will attack me in the future. Indeed, they are. I can see them very easily out here during the day. They were a lot more difficult to spot in the cave. I think some of them might be out of my range. Oh, that time I just missed, I think. Uh, but these guys are going to attack us as we're doing the climb. And I think this is much easier to manage down here. Just one of the advantages of our new long range weapon. Went ahead and popped my shield there just to make sure I don't take too much damage. Also helps with our mod generation. I was hoping I can get one more snipe off potentially. I'm seeing a few more of these gargoyles up there. Yo, am I showing my age? Any gargoyle animated series enjoyers out there? I think that is out of my range. So we did pick up a ring one time and I was like, why would I ever want this? I haven't seen a use case for it, but all it does is increase the maximum range of your weapon by 30%. And that 30% would probably be enough to snipe that guy with my mod power if we used it. So we found one use case. Now, the walk up here is kind of sketchy, and I'm not oh, too sure if there's any hidden stuff inside. Nice job! Oh, you earned some pets for that one. Wow, you really sniffed out that gargoyle. I'm so proud of you. Oh, it is dark in this biome. I might need to turn up the lights a little bit for you guys. Hello? Is it easier to see? <laughs> One of the hardest parts of making YouTube content is balancing for what my monitor sees versus what the recording file sees versus what the YouTube encoder is going to do to it. I always try my best, but this place was looking extra dark. I think it needed a little bit of help. So we've been moving through the middle of this building and then onto, onto this perfect, oh God, perfectly safe outdoor scaffolding. Is there anything here? Oh, I don't think that's jumpable. That's just a gargoyle perch. <laughs> uh, two paths, I think. Yes, there's a ladder up on the outside and then some stuff inside. Let's try to take a look at both of these. This has a staircase that goes down. Not even a chest. Oh, I spoke too soon. Excuse me. I had a good feeling. So if I wanted to descend rapidly, they have a hole just for that. How wonderful. I imagine that's probably all that's in here. I'm not seeing anything on this far platform. There is a window though. Ooh. Is this part of the same walkway? Is that? No, I'm behind it. Okay. Oh, another chest. And it looks like I might be able to go out over there. Oh, this is neat. This is very intricately designed. Uh, okay, that did work. I can't drop down from here. Maybe this was just another gargoyle perch. It probably would have been trying to claw through the windows and push me down this hole. But we took care of them before we came in. I'm gonna check this one too. Maybe I should have looked at the ground first before I did that. It looks like we did find the chest from above and got some elemental damage. Very nice. So I imagine the ladder over here is the Oh, we're doing really well. Is the real way up now. I'm surprised there's not like something on this hook that you have to shoot down and detach. I think I missed some forged iron over here. It is weird that I'm getting forged iron when all of my weapons right now need galvanized. Oh, that was kind of sketchy. 
But I guess I'll take it. We might level up another weapon at the end of the day. I do kind of miss my elemental damage right now. And we did just get that really good ring for it in the previous episode. That would help with our mod power. Whoa, Ration! No, you don't. Oh, I wish I reloaded. Maybe you do. I'm gonna taunt with dog. Thank you, dog. Oh God, here's the shield. Okay. That was a little sketchy. I think my assumption of being pushed down the middle was pretty accurate. I think they were trying to push me down the elevator shaft there. Gotta say, I'm not a fan. Oh no, do I have to jump? Oh, I do. Is this something? That looks like it was breakable. Okay, I've checked the window this time. <laughs> I've learned from the past. I'm gonna aggro this guy if I can. Bro, maybe he's just a real statue and I've been shooting at him this whole time. That's the chest we got before. I like that they give you a little peek of it to let you know it's there. If you're really paying attention. Oh, speaking of paying attention. There we go. Now, if these guys are going to come to life. Oh, yeah, I made contact. I feel like they'd be doing it now. So elevator still goes higher. We're not at the top yet. Any sketchy ledges I can jump onto? <laughs> that one has a chest there. <laughs> I guess that was another way to find it. What about inside? Oh, here we go. Another quick descent if you need a quick death. Something heavy must have fallen out of this to do a hole the entire way down. Try to see if there's any gargoyles. I'm not spotting anything. Uh, looks like there might be something behind the stairs. I'm not seeing anything, though. Was this breaker box? Oh, I broke the box. <laughs> oh, no. Okay, at least it's not a jump over the death pit. That's a little safer. Don't worry, Nightcrawler over here will teleport to me. And another ladder over here. I feel like I've gone a long distance without spotting any secrets or treasure chests. But the map is getting a lot more narrow. No secret holes for me to jump down over here, are there? Oh, this is getting sketchy. No ladder this time. Chest, there we go. My loot senses, dude, they're getting strong. <laughs> All right. This looks like it might be top floor or very close to it. There's one more floor above us on the mini map. This has been a good climb. So this is a letter from the same guy that was in the clock room that we saw earlier in the episode. He's talking about there were demons that started attacking people. He thinks the clock drew them in, but it was almost like people couldn't notice the demons before it was too late. I wonder if that's just because they were hiding as stone. This is the last ladder, I think. Oh, and there's that purple item we saw outside. So, we know right where this goes. I like how I'm still carrying severed hands in my inventory. That's reassuring. Maybe we'll bring those with us to the end of the game. Well, that's plugged in. Give her a spin. Oh, we're just moving that gear into place. That's so cool. Nice. Oh, that's kind of satisfying, right? Objective success! Hey. Da, 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 da. And there is an elevator. Back down to the... Back down to the bottom. Oh, maybe I have to turn it on first. Give it another go. Uh, it's moving. Yep. That rope's moving. It's just an old elevator. It's going to take some time. Inside the chest, we find 
the Timekeeper's Jewel. The Timekeeper's Jewel increases the duration of all status effects applied by the wearer. Whoa, last episode. I, um, or maybe it wasn't last episode. They're all blending together. I've been editing so much. Oh my God. Uh, but I was talking about a dot build because I realized I could apply fire and bleeds with my current setup if we wanted to. Increasing those durations could be excellent. We may need to look into this in the future. I feel like I need to also find a way of applying poison and I haven't found that yet. But keeping uh, three different debuffs up on a target, it's almost like we're playing an Affliction Warlock. That sounds awesome. And this is the broken timepiece. This is what was sitting outside on... Oh, I was wondering why there was a red cross here. It's probably because just the, the sack was blocking the shot. I thought there was an enemy right there. I panicked for a second. Uh, this was sitting on the clock hand, and when we reactivated the clock, it fell down. New material. Oh, I can craft something with it. Cool. Well, I'll take the elevator. Don't mind me. Oh, come on, Nightcrawler. Get in here. <laughs> Where'd he go? You know, I suppose we could always name him Kurt. Kurt Wagner. Down the road from the clock tower, making our way towards the next checkpoint. I could already see it on the map from that uh, Lamarck district that we were at at the beginning of the episode. Over here was the clock tower and we are just down the street a little bit right now. Hey, excuse me. I was trying to story tell. Thank you very much. I gotta keep the narrative moving. Oh, this is oh. my first triple kill. Oh my God. How the first one miss all three of them though. Can we talk about that? What? <laughs> Not too far to go. And I'm guessing that this is going to be, yes, that massive mansion that we saw when we first entered this biome. We have finally found our way to the other side of the wall. This place is called the Moro Centurium. We'll check this out in the next episode. I think it's a pretty big building. We're gonna go back to Ward 13 right now and do some crafting. This is the time lapse. It comes from the broken timepiece. Creates a six meter blast, which freezes all standard enemies for seven seconds. Dealing damage to frozen enemies immediately breaks the time effect, applies a slow for the remaining duration. It looks like it doesn't do any damage. So this is basically a big AOE freeze around you. Interesting, a six meter blast. So you can, if you're being swarmed in a gauntlet or a bunch of uh, enemies are just jumping on you all at once, you pop this and freeze them. A thousand mod power is a lot. Uh, we have a build that, that I think could, could rack that up pretty easily. But uh, if you didn't max out spirit, I feel like you'd be struggling with this one. I'm not even gonna craft this one. I need my Luminite crystals, but that sounds good depending on your build. This is from the previous episode, I believe, where we were clearing through the first areas of Lonesome. I believe that's where this bone sap came from. If I'm wrong, my apologies. It may have been from the formless area that we did on the other planet. But it launches a slow-moving orb that pulses every 0.5 seconds, striking enemies within 3 meters for 20 shock damage and applying overloaded. This orb lasts 20 seconds. The orb can be overcharged by striking it with additional damage. Wait a minute, so you shoot the orb and then you, you shoot it again. I'm going to try this one. I slapped it on the Chicago typewriter that we unlocked very early in our playthrough. And in one load of the magazine, I have 80 bullets. And those 80 bullets were able to charge the mod all in one go. So that's a big bonus. I could do this, charge it, then reload and get ready to shoot a bunch of damage into it. But let's fire it off for the first time. Oop. Oh, that is slow moving. I see it being supercharged too. Bro, that's actually almost just like our shield that we have that passes through enemies. So we could get multiples of these going. <laughs> I don't know how that would be beneficial, but this seems to bounce off solid walls and continue traveling. That also, the duration on that was kind of insane, right? We could very likely get another one of those charged electricity orbs going 
before that one even disappears. Let's try. Uh, here it goes. I'm gonna charge it up. Oh, I should put my shield on. I generate more mod power that way. Oh my god, we could charge this super easy. So this does initial damage, but then it also does like a static charge, which is that small explosion that you see after. And it is having the effect increased. Oh, okay, so we have a, a lot of stuff in our build that could already help this. For one, we could use the chain lightning gun and stack even more electricity out. We have the ring that would increase our mod generation, our mod power based on dealing elemental damage. We have our ring we're already using that increases our mod damage. So that means more electricity damage. And then our good friend Lee over here, you know how we bought our fire ring from him very early on in the campaign. He also sells a lightning equivalent ring that we could pick up as well for 500 scrap that would increase our shock damage. That all seems really, really good. I wish I wasn't broke. <laughs> I'm going to buy this now so I remember. And I could do a little bit of... Wait a minute. I might not be as broke as I think because you sell stuff super cheap. I just got like 5,000 scrap from what we just did. Let me buy this out. Let me buy this out. I'm not going to have any Luminite crystals from my Dragon Hearts, but so far I haven't been punished for that. Maybe at some point during our playthrough, we're going to have to have a elite farming montage where I try to get more crystals so my build doesn't fall apart. But I don't think I have any other lightning primary weapons, so we'll keep using the sh you know be what let's there. save let's be economical if we wanted to try something like this now the tommy gun's probably better than my minigun that i started with i think it's probably time to just commit to the upgrades i'm talking myself into it i was trying to be economical at first but no let's invest in our future so so the chicago typewriter is going to be upgraded as far as i can get it with the scrap that i have left that makes it a plus eight then we can start to upgrade the enigma soon okay i'm gonna work on this in between episodes i'm trying to get some videos done before i leave but i'm really excited about this combination i think it's worth investing in we'll see how it works in the next episode thank you guys so much for being here i'll see you again tomorrow